Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Autocruise Star Spirit which is a 2004 on a 54 plate. So start my walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first. You've got your cassette here. So using the habitation key which is this black round one, opens this lock. To take the cassette out, there's a small yellow clip. Make sure the blades close on the inside of the toilet, which I'll show you when inside. Lift and slide out. You can then carry this to your waist disposal point. Remove the cap. Press the button. Tip it out. Once you've tipped it out, there's normally a tap there, so you can put some water in, give it a rinse, and tip out again. And then to fill with chemical, using the cap, it's 120 mil, which is four ounces of the blue or the green chemical and then it just slides back in and clips in you've got your exhaust for the vehicle your exhaust for your diesel heater your fridge vents your main hookup point so this is where you hook the vehicle up so you get your hookup lead hook the vehicle up first by lifting the collar and exposing the ends and clipping it on Shot. and then Hook up to the site and do it in reverse when unhooking the vehicle so that you're not walking around with a live lead. LPG, so your gas lugger, L liquid petroleum gas, this is where you keep your bottles. So you can get two six kilogram propane bottles in here. When you get your bottle on board, if you do, just tie it in just for safety. And then to connect the pigtail to the bottle, it's a left hand thread and it's just hand tightened so there's no need for a spanner on this vehicle and you turn it on and off from the top of the bottle always turn it off before you leave your site as it's safer to have your gas turned off than it is to drive around with it on this is your vent when heating on gas when heating the water on gas sorry you need to take this cover off so just pinch the top wiggle it wiggle it off and then put this in the driver's door pocket or the gas locker and before you go just pop it back on underneath you've got this black hose and it's clipped in in this corner of the bumper inside and this is your waste outlet so you turn it on here and this is just the water you've used you can drain it off by going to the waste disposal point on the motorhome service bay on the way out and draining the water off but remember just to clip it back up so it doesn't dangle when driving on the back you've got your rear view camera high level brake line and your reverse sensors and you've got a tow bar with seven pin electrics so coming around to the passenger side of the vehicle you've got some storage so these are your carpets underneath the side bench seat and your leisure battery lives in here as well. You've got your awning which rolls out and the awning winding handles in the habitation door and some storage in here. To fill with water, this is the water filler. So you get your wheel pump is this one here that clips in that clips in like that and then you'd need a aqua roll or a bucket pop it in there and it'll suck the water out when you turn the pump to external and it'll suck the water into your main tank so that's how you fill up with fresh water on the wing of the passenger side is your diesel filler so it opens with a Peugeot key and you'll be able to fill with diesel and then to get the bonnet open just underneath So there's a, just above the clutch pedal, there's a little lever there which pops the bonnet. And then 
and underneath you've got your battery so you've got your positive terminal at the back negative turn terminal at the front brake fluid power steering fluid coolant and the main one you're going to need which is your screen wash in the locker beside the wardrobe you've got your power management supply unit so you've got your RCD, your main trips and then your MCBs so if you did trip the vehicle you can try here before you try your main sight to turn the vehicle on and off so this is your control panel as well so you've got your charger so your charger charges the leisure battery and vehicle battery when hooked up so you can turn this on and off but obviously when just leave it on when you connect with mains 240 volt hookup this will come on and start charging the batteries your battery select so you can have it off so if you want or you can have it down to van van is the leisure battery car is the carb battery and then you've got your pump so should you be wanting to use any water you've got your external pump where you can fill from outside you've got your test button here so you can view the level of your battery which is your leisure battery and you can view the level of how much water is in your fresh water tank which is along the bottom you've got a switch here for the radio as it's fitted with a head unit in here so you can put the radio on when you're on site without using the carb radio and you've got speakers across the back and you've got a fuse there which will be for the radio I'd imagine and it tells you here your main voltage power levels of the both batteries and with the pump so when filling you turn it to external and then when you want to use it for the taps toilet or shower you'll hear a kick in there when you put it to internal and it'll pressurize the water to the taps toilet and shower so to heat the vehicle so the heating on this vehicle is a Wabasto diesel heater so you've got off in the middle heating on the top which brings on the red light and this will heat the vehicle and you just adjust the temperature on here being the highest and then bringing it down to the lowest so the high is 30 degrees maximum temperature of the heating and then should the vehicle beat the temperature you can knock the heating off and turn the fan on which is the blue light at the bottom and this will keep the heat circulating around the vehicle you do need to have a quarter of a tank of diesel or more in the main diesel tank as they are on a, on a different feed from the engine to the diesel heater intake underneath you've got your Truma Ultra Store so this is your water heater on gas so this is where the cover needs to come off and you simply turn it down and you to just want 30 to 70 degrees of the temperature of your water but make sure that your covers off and make sure that you've got enough water on board before you start heating any water because if you didn't have any water on board and no water in the boiler you will burn out the element in the water heater to heat your water on electric in the back u-shaped lounge you'll find a few spur if you just turn this on this will start to heat the water on electric without using your gas but of course you can use the gas and electric together if you are in desperate need of hot water and this should take about 5-10 minutes to warm up with both both sources running together but if you've paid your side fees don't waste your gas use your electric to heat your water and when you're wild camping you'll not be able to use your electric because you're not hooked up you'll have to use your gas in the back corner so where your vent is on the outside which is the cover you take off when heating the water on gas is the location behind in the vehicle of where the true boiler is so this holds 10 litres of water at any one time and it refills from the fresh water tank underneath so in the winter it's very important that you eliminate all the water within the vehicle so you would drain the boiler off which i'll show you in a second you'll drain the fresh and the waste off outside and you'll leave all the taps within the motorhome in the open position to stop any air or water from building up and potentially freezing when we get a hard frost 
So when you come to the boiler, the tap will be down like so, and this is the drain tap. So that indicates that the boiler is closed and it can hold 10 litres of water. When you come in, you will just lift it up into the up position and leave it stood like this over the winter months until you come to reuse the vehicle. That is the boiler in the open position and 10 litres of water will drain directly out underneath the van. When you're ready to use it, if you just knock it down, then you would shut all the taps within the vehicle, you'd go and fill the vehicle with water from the outside and fill the tank. Come in, on your control panel up here, if you put the pump to internal, go to the cold side of the tap first, you'll get an automatic cold water pressurised flow. Go to the hot side, it'll cough, splutter, and all it's doing is it's allowing the air that's accumulated in the system out until you get a free flow of water from the hot side of the tap. This is when you know that your system's primed and you'll get a steady flow of water throughout the whole use of the season until you drain the boiler back down. But remember, drain it down because if you didn't, it's very expensive for one of these and it isn't covered under any sort of warranty. To make the bed at the back, you'd simply just lift and slide these both out and then you'd use the backrests into here to form your double bed across the width of the back of the motorhome. You can turn these upside down as well as you won't get the bull nose on the front and you'll get a flatter surface to sleep upon but that's up to you. But remember, put your backrest into here to fill that space. In the wardrobe is the location where your freestanding table lives. You've also got your aerial, so if you're struggling for a TV signal, what you would do is you'd loosen the nut off, push the pole up, tighten it back up to hold it there, and then use the toggle on the bottom to direct the aerial. But a tip is to look where other Motorhomes and caravans on your site are pointing and point yours in the same direction But before you leave if you pull it down and tighten the nut up As if it was to be left up the wind could get underneath the aerial and damage it So remember to pull it down into the vehicle You've got your, your booster there. So that just does its own thing. It will come on and off with the mains power or 12 volt on the panel and then under here you've got this little switch this switch here You've got to turn that on to use your fridge on mains electric because it's a fuse spur of mains power to the fridge but i'll go through the fridge in a second but remember turn that on before you put your fridge on mains hookup so to operate your fridge you've got this little black button at the end which you press and press and hold and it'll go off and it'll turn back on and then A stands for automatic energy selection. So the brain of the fridge will pick out what best source you have on offer. So at the moment we've got a gas bottle on and we're hooked up. It's when to hook up as it's shown a picture of a plug. And this will work as a mains 240 volt household appliance. If I was to take the hook about, it would switch over to gas. And then if I was to start the engine, it would go over at the 12 volt setting, which isn't from your leisure battery, it's from the engine alternator when it's running, sends the feed to here to keep the fridge at the same temperature. So beforehand, you would need to pre-chill it. If you're lucky enough to keep it at home, put it on charge a few days before you go away. The night, be turn your fridge on. The night before you go away, load your shopping into the fridge, allow it to chill overnight, and then when you're ready to unhook and it's on automatic, as soon as you start the engine it'll send a feed of 12 volt to the fridge and it'll basically act as a cool box. It'll get no colder but it'll get no warmer and it'll keep all your shopping nice and fresh until you arrive back on site and you either hook back up, you go, you, you light, you're going well camping so it will light on gas or if you wanted to manually change it over and turn it off automatic you can just press and hold the square button, it'll move away from the air. As you can see, it's got a manual hookup, battery, or gas, and then you just press here. You've got your temperature, 5 being the coldest, so when pre-chilling, you may want it on 5. When you put your shopping in, you may want to just turn it down 1, and then that is 
now lit on gas so you would just press and use the two arrows to move it across but you shouldn't need to you should just be able to leave it on automatic and it'll do its own thing when you're not using the motorhome it's very important that you clean the fridge out so take all your items out of it give it a clean out and then you don't want to shut the door because it's got a rubber seal on so all the clean air that you've just cleaned it with it'll be trapped in here and it'll become mold moldy smelly and all sorts of bacteria and things will start growing in your fridge so what you've got to do is lift the handle that you would release the door with and underneath is a black little clip put the black clip into the clip on the frame of the fridge and it'll leave the door open so air ventilation runs in and out of the fridge when it's not in use but when it is in use you've got a handy travel catch on the bottom so you can lock the door so it won't open when traveling but remember take the catch off before you open the door as you'll either break the catch or not be able to get into your fridge so in the kitchen area you've got three or should i say four lit gas rings there allow these to cool before you put the cooker hood down and if you haven't used the gas in a while prime the gas through by just pressing and holding listen for it and then as soon as you hear it try and ignite it and the gas will come through because what you need to do is there'll be air in the lines you'll need to push the air out and the gas will soon follow and, and that's called priming your gas system underneath you've got your grill so you can light that as well and then once it's lit if you just keep a hold of it for a couple more seconds before letting go and all that does is it allows the thermocouple to get warm and then your gas appliance will stay lit and you've got your oven there so again keep a hold of it till I get till the thermocouple gets warm before releasing and it'll stay lit you may want to remove your grill pan and oven shelf when traveling as it can rattle a bit when you're driving and there's your grill pan there un underneath you've got your pump in there so when you do turn the pump to internal that'll kick in and that's just the location of your pump so you may hear it a little bit louder when you're at the front of the van to when you're at the back storage cupboards all your lights are individually switched around the van so you've got lights here and that one will also turn on the LED strip that the previous customers fitted by the looks of it and then all your top lights are individually lit as well so switches on there and you can turn them on and off got storage up here which goes a little bit further back And then as long as your pump's on Go to the cold side first when filling the boiler And you'll get automatic Pressurised flow of cold and then slowly start turning it round to the hot As it's pushing the air out and the floor will improve so you'll get a lot of that so just turn it back and then slowly start turning it around until it gets rid of all the air and you get a pressurized floor from the hot side of the cold tap or should i say the hot side of the hot tap and then once you've had the tap on if you just turn it off the pump will run on for two to three seconds longer as it's just pressurizing the system until it goes silent like it just has 
and then as soon as you run any water, so taps, toilet, shower, it'll kick back in and then fall silent again. To drain your fresh water tank, so this is your fresh water tank which is just underneath the hatch beside the bathroom door. And you'll see a red plug on a chain. You pull the plug out and it'll drain out your fresh water. So it's very important that you drain this out in the winter <coughs> as you wouldn't want the water to freeze in this tank as it can, can split and damage the tank. So just pull that and allow the water out. But you would do this in the winter if you weren't using it for a couple of weeks or if you've taken on a source of contaminated water you drain your fresh water tank down. To operate the toilet, make sure the pump's on. On the back you've got a blue button here so you just press it and it will flush the toilet. So always flush before use, it will lubricate the seal between the blade and the cassette. And then on the side here you have a grey lever. Slide this to the right, open the blade, everything will then go into the cassette. Once you've finished, flush and close the lever, which is called the blade lever, back to the left hand side to the shut position. If you were buying the packs of the blue and the pink, the blue will go into the cassette, the pink Get a spray bottle, dilute it, spray the bowl, and then flush the toilet. And it'll do the same job as the flush on this vehicle is taken from the fresh water main tank and not a header tank like on caravans and older motorhomes. And when it is full, this person here emptying the cassette there will be a red light indicating that the cassette is full and it's time to empty the cassette. All your blinds operate the same on the vehicle, so pinch and you've got a blackout blind. Pinch in the middle, it'll clip together and you've got a flyer screen. Clip the middle to depart the two. Remember, also when winterizing, if you remove this hose, lie it in the shower tray and take the shower head off and leave all the mixes open, it'll stop any water coiling up and freezing in the pipe. To lock your habitation door, you'll just push this black surround down and that'll lock the door. Go for the handle behind and it will open. You've got a 25 amp fuse in there, which is your step. So this switch takes the step in and brings it back out. And then this is just to show that your hot water is getting up the temperature there as it's getting rather warm. And you can see the steam coming off the water. So now in the cab, which is based on a Peugeot Boxer, you've got your handbrake down to your right. Driver and passenger electric windows and then driver and passenger mirror adjustment. So you've got two adjustments on each side, the big mirror and the blind spot. Wipers, lights and indicators. This one has been retrofitted with cruise control by the last owner as well. So this wouldn't have come standard on the vehicle. So what you do is you push it, you pull it up to set and push up and down for your speed and push it down to turn. Or should I say push it down to turn on, pull it up to stop, up and down for your speed. And you'll hear the beep beep. And that'll tell you when it's on. Five speed manual gearbox, so pushing the clutch down, lifting the collar and into reverse, you'll hear the beeps which are your parking sensors, but you do have a rear view camera on this, so you can see behind you. You've got your circulation of your air conditioning, or should I say there's no air con on this one, it's just heating or cold air. So you've got recirculation, this side, or bringing fresh air in, your fan speed 
and your temperature, hot or cold, and where you want it to go to, which is the distribution. Heated mirrors, hazards, and rear fog lights, and then an FM AM radio. So you press one to six to save your favorite channels, and you can scroll through here, or you can put a CD in. And above sits your rear view monitor, lockable glove box in there. Your toolkit for the van is underneath here, which is just storage. There's your toolkit wrapped up in that felt, which has got a jack and brace in there. And then to black the car out on an evening, you've got curtains on either side that come round. And then you've got one big curtain behind that comes across here. So it'll black out the cab on an evening.